Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to our uh, live Q&A on, on April 4th, not March, um, April 4th, and um, looks like I've got things set up okay. Uh, and certainly do let me know if you see uh, any problems with video or um, audio. Thank you, as usual. Uh, so, hel so hello, Slots Enthusiasts. Um, it's great to hang out with you for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. This Q&A session is every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on my John Friedel Professor Slots YouTube channel, uh, which you can find if, you, uh, if you're on a podcast and want to go uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, it is at professorslots.com slash YouTube. That's the convenient link. Otherwise, it's a bunch of numbers. Uh, this um, excellent. Uh, this Q and A session uh, um, uh, is uh, weekly, and if you are here live, it's great to hang out with you guys. It's always fun to hang out with you guys and talk about slots-related topics. Um, it's where I get some feedback while the conversation is good, uh, while the conversation is going on uh, at. Uh, real-time feedback that's great so those of you who are listening later on the podcast feel free to um, show up at YouTube uh, next time uh, in the next uh, in the in the last week I've gotten more useful feedback from several of you who have either listened to the podcast recording of this live show or watched the show itself this is my 20th live show uh, and the consensus is I've gotten much better over time, but I could still improve. Uh, so let's do that. Um, I have a few ideas about how to do this, which is something of a amalg amalgamation of your feedback plus a few of my own ideas. Uh, but first, um, but first, uh, now's a good time to say hello to our fellow slots enthusiasts on the live chat here on YouTube. Uh, if you're on the live chat and you haven't already done so, please say hello uh, to me and everybody else on the chat uh, and let us know which state you are uh, that you play slots in. So I'm uh, looking at this. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott has showed up early. Um, again, I noticed that you were there a few minutes ago. Uh, awesome. Uh, and Jan, uh, she says, hoping you are, uh, she says hello to everybody and hoping you are staying healthy. Uh, Jan uh, is from Texas, but she plays in Louisiana. Uh, my family friends, uh, Dave and Lois, uh, say hello from Ontario, uh, one of our first international uh, visitors. Um, and, uh, and Denise uh, is also in Texas, but she plays in Oklahoma. Um, Scott says he is from cloudy Ozark, Missouri. Uh, don't say cloudy. Somebody in California is going to say it's not cloudy there. <laughs> um, uh, he says he's near Branson, uh, or Springfield, Missouri. Um, let's see. Yes. Uh, uh, Dave and Lois, um, the family friends, uh, play in Ontario, uh, part of the year and in Florida the rest of the year. Um, so Jingwok, uh, uh, thank you for the feedback on the video and audio. It's always important to get that right. Today was um, an interesting one where where it was zoomed down to a corner of the screen, maybe something left over from last time that I tried. Uh, so Paula, hi Paula. Uh, and um, Steve says, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> hi, Steve. Uh, he's in Wisconsin. Uh, Chuck, um, thank you again for the feedback. And Joanna, hi, Joanna. Uh, Paula's daughter. Um, uh, or maybe I should say Paula is Joanna's mother. <laughs> um, uh, Scott says, posted this on Red Ski. Um, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, if you, uh, there's several things that can be helpful to share this. And I try to mention this at the beginning of the video because it's most helpful, is you can share. Uh, this um, and you can like this if you like this video now uh, on YouTube uh, th it'll share um, uh, more it, YouTube will take it upon itself to engage its algorithm and share it to more people so that in a few minutes we would have um, many more people show up so if you and the more people who like it right now the more that'll spread 
and so we'll have a larger crowd to have great questions with. So if you wouldn't mind liking uh, uh, something else that would just be a benefit later, and I think it's becoming more of a benefit would be if you were to subscribe, uh, you'll get more notifications about some of the other stuff that I'll be doing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, uh, Doug says, Hello and greetings from Missouri. Philly T, it's good to see everybody um, as usual. Uh, he is uh, on the Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, West Virginia border. Interesting. Uh, yep, <laughs> Dean, Dean is in Vegas. Uh, all those um, uh, posts on what's going on in Vegas, which is just amazing. Um, thanks. Uh, Russ uh, from Troy, Alabama, excellent. Uh, and oh, a coworker on my day job, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hope things are going well today. Um, thanks for thanks for showing up. So uh, to um, and I'll come back and keep an eye on messages. But uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do, as I was just saying, is there's been some feedback, um, not just recently, but um, I tried to improve things by not being as distracted by chat. The most recent feedback has been to um, make it a slightly better experience for people listening to the podcast who's, you know, can't see the live chat, and I just sort of bounce around a little bit too much. I was much worse at it before, um, but around episode 10 or the 10th uh, live, but I've tried to get better at it, but I'm still doing it too much, so I'm just going to try to look at chat occasionally and not get distracted so I can stay on topic uh, and make it a better experience for people on the podcast. Um, I do try to listen to feedback. Um, so that's one of the ideas that uh, was shared with me uh, and also, uh, you know, how to do that is something I am uh, have a few ideas on and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, every day's, every, every live session is an improvement. Uh, should see me a year from now. <laughs> Um, should see me a year from now. Uh, so, um, so I'm glad I was able to say hello to everybody. Um, and um, those of you who are just showing up, hi Jill. Uh, and uh, yeah, I understand David Lewis. Um, I was just explaining that to somebody about how to get a free account on YouTube if you've never been to YouTube before. So that allows you to chat. Uh, and hopefully people will be able to figure that out if they care to chat. Otherwise, they all can only listen. Uh, so if my dad is online, my dad, uh, and to chat, um, you need to get a free account. Um, but I won't worry about that. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, let's move forward here. Uh, so um, uh, those of you who just showed up, uh, uh, please say hello and let us know which state you're in. And uh, so my father is in Michigan at the moment, and half part of the year is in Florida. So he's representing Michigan, as far as I can tell. Okay, uh, so um, today's topic is something I'm going to, this is that new th one of the new things I'm going to try. I've been doing it a little bit, but I think it was a positive enough response that I would continue to do it and more aggressively do it, which is in the last week because of uh, uh, what's going on with all the casinos being closed, um, I've been trying to alleviate boredom by posting daily on my website, my public Facebook profile, my private Professor Slots Enthusiasts Facebook group, and each of my state-by-state -state private Facebook communities, um, of which there are 56, because uh, that includes states, but also territories. And uh, I think I have one territory that doesn't, was it Guam, that doesn't have anybody, but it's just a, uh, uh, mostly uh, armed forces individuals there. So uh, in the last week, I posted six different things. And as I go through each, um, I, I don't want to take away from the videos that I put out and the articles that I've posted in this last week, but they're, you know, it's smoothly spoke, it's smoothly, you know, rec a recording of just the topics, but there's also a few subtleties that sort of need a longer explanation, but it wouldn't be necessarily the best thing to put into the video. Um, but 
that they're worth mentioning, and certainly I can take your questions. So that's what I'm going to try to do this time, and if it works out well, uh, next time, uh, and after that, at the live Q&A, to sort of uh, see if you have any questions about the articles and videos that I'm posting. Speaking of the videos, I hope it wasn't too confusing for some people. Uh, for 20 weeks, uh, 20, 21 weeks, since just about the middle of November 2019, I've been going live on Saturdays, and that's all I've basically done. There's been a couple of videos I put up, um, but I haven't been regular about it. So you might notice at the top of my YouTube, uh, the banner there, it now has a green box that shows I will be posting on Tuesdays, Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, uh, and then there would be a live Q&A on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, and that's the schedule. Now, I wasn't able to do this last Thursday, but I did put out one on Sunday and Tuesday, uh, so I'm going to see if I can keep up with that schedule, but that's the plan, and I want to go over those videos. So if you are only used to seeing a notification from YouTube that I'm going to be live on Saturday, now you're getting notifications on some of the other much shorter videos, much less than an hour videos. Um, I don't mean to explain YouTube if you already understand it, but there's plenty of people who don't understand YouTube. So you sh if you've subscribed, you should get a notification when I put up a video and you can expect to have videos on Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the schedule that I've given myself uh, and I'll try to be consistent about that. And uh, there's not much more to say about that. These are various topics that I've covered and I'm trying to determine which ones are more popular than others. And I'll talk about that in a minute. I have some how-to stuff, which seems to be wildly popular, um, not surprisingly. And then there's some history stuff, uh, which I, you know, maybe you're a history buff and you like it as much as I do. I, I find some of the stuff fascinating because the history tells us the future, uh, but it's not necessarily as popular as how-to uh, topics. So um, I'm going to go over a couple of those and I'll go over a couple of articles. Um, so that's the plan and we shall see what the feedback shows later. Um, so yes, over the last week I've posted short recorded videos um, uh, and, um, and as well as the live, uh, the live stream uh, using the proper terminology uh, later on, posted that on my podcast later. So for those of you who are on my podcast, you can go to professorslots.com slash YouTube. That's a convenient link instead of a whole bunch of numbers. Um, uh, and then you can um, find me on, on YouTube, um, the second largest search engine in the world. So I'm going to uh, post the first video, a link to the first video in the live chat. Um, there you go. Uh, and... Uh, the and for those of you who are listening from the from the podcast uh, or later um, you'll find that link uh, shortly in the description on the YouTube video but also uh, it's going to be in the show notes uh, on my website for um, the, the podcast that I'll be putting out tonight uh, tomorrow night uh, uh, um, and not to distract myself from chat uh, I'll come back to that uh, in uh, in the show notes, uh, you'll find the show notes for the podcast at professorslots.com slash episode 85. Uh, just type that in, but that won't be available until tomorrow when I post it. So uh, that's where you'll find the links that I'm sharing with everybody live now. <laughs> a little confusing. There's got to be a shorter way to say all that. Um, so the first topic is my YouTube video called Why Do Slot Machines Use Fruit Real Symbols? Um, I'm trying to introduce a few concepts, uh, including later on definitions that'll help us all sort of better communicate. Uh, for those of us who don't know a lot about this stuff, I know some of you do, some of you've read all my stuff, uh, but there are uh, plenty of people out there who, you know, to have a conversation, we need to talk about some things first. These will, so these videos will get more sophisticated um, because I'll assume that you've seen the prior videos uh, and um, then we can have a, a deeper conversation. So right now it's history and definitions and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but it won't be long before we're going to get deep into it. So uh, this video on fruit real symbols falls under the category of slot machine history. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, history of slots 
videos to make. Uh, but knowing the history of slot machines does help us to understand trends and patterns, so we better understand what's coming next. Um, and uh, so one of the, th so the history of slot machines, it goes back about 140 years, maybe, roughly 140 years. It's hard to say exactly when the first slot machine was invented. Um, uh, you can go with 1887. Uh, because it was a machine that you could gamble on and it had a slot. Before that, there were machines that couldn't handle coins. First thing they could do was take a coin uh, and then years later pay out in a coin. And at what point do you decide that it become a slot machine? So a lot of people say it has to take a coin and, and reward you with a coin if you won. Uh, and uh, that's a lot of the definitions around is it truly a slot machine before these slot machines there were poker machines also known right from the beginning as one-armed bandits and uh, they didn't dispense coins but it, it would be in a bar um, a brothel uh, and other places um, people would be and uh, you would win a drink or a cigar if you won. Now this was based on the game of poker. Royal Flush was the top prize, uh, and uh, it, but it wasn't based on the 52 card deck, it was based on the 50 card deck. If you want to understand a little bit more about that, you'll have to check the article. Uh, I don't want to give away all the details, I just want to talk in general about what it covers. So uh, in 1887, the slot machine that had a slot to accept a coin and a tray to uh, reward the player if they won with coins uh, was invented in 1887 by Charles Fay uh, of San Francisco. He's known as the father of slot machines, not just because he invented um, the slot machine, but also but because he he promoted it, uh, which is part of what's really important. Um, with be being a father of something, not just the invention, but also the promotion of it. Uh, they didn't have, it was, um, uh, it didn't have uh, fruit, real symbols, until 1910. And those were added uh, to circumvent the banning of slot machines because people turned against it. Uh, then uh, in 1920, Prohibition, America's Prohibition, began uh, this forced uh, these gum dispensing slot machines with their fruit reel symbols where the fruit that you won with was the gum flavor of the gum you received as a prize. Uh, Prohibition opened all these speakeasies where you could get a drink, but it was uh, the slot machines went back to dispensing money and they went into the speakeasies and uh, it's that's known as the golden age of slots. So that's a different topic, uh, but that's basically the, the coverage of that article. Um, and if you have questions, now's a good time. Uh, next, next week, you might want to watch some of the videos and make sure you, if you have questions. So I'm going to check uh, to see what the questions might have been. Hello, Robert. Uh, Robert is from Dallas, Texas. Um, and uh, yeah, the YouTube and, and Dave and Lois ask about notifications that they've been getting them. Uh, yeah, YouTube's great about that, and that's that's why I ask people to like the video here because there are people who uh, may have seen one of my videos before and they get a notification. So it's a pretty pretty aggressive system. Um, uh, I mean, it's it it they do try to promote things. It doesn't become you don't become the second biggest search engine in the world without making an effort. Um, let's see, Sal Bova, Sal uh, says, hi, John, Boston. Okay, welcome, uh, welcome from Boston. Uh, any truth to pressure sensors on spin buttons? No. Um, uh, what would they do on pressure sensors? Uh, push it only a little. Uh, I mean, you can, the, the thing, uh, yeah, it's a little off topic, but I'll briefly mention, if you have a pressure sensor, um, uh, when you push a button, uh, it's usually something called a capacitor uh, button. Um, it, it, uh, it's not unlike your phone um, a little bit. Uh, it, 
when you have a switch, it either you, you either press the button or you don't. Right? And how well <laughs> my cat's bug. Uh, if my cat comes up here, I'll introduce you to one of my cats. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and uh, uh, Paula also wrote, um, sorry, I'll let Paula answer that question. Uh, she got a question. Um, pressure sensors, sensors, uh, you know, they're not reading, a you, can, you can have a pressure sensor which reads the amount of pressure you're pressing on it, but um, I don't see any use for that. I mean, we, if you just look at video games, uh, how much do you press a button? It either flips the switch or it doesn't. Uh, and what other purpose would a button be? Uh, it would be awesome to have um, like a gaming control, like on a video game, where you might, uh, you know, have a virtual gun, ray gun, and it's higher energy when you press harder. Uh, but I don't see anything like that coming into slot machines. People, you know, let's say you had a pressure sensor that uh, presses, the, you press the button a lot and you bet more. Oh, that's going to lead to all kinds of trouble. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't see the point of having a pressure sensor. Also, uh, pressure sensors um, can be overwhelmed if you press it too hard. And I anybody who's played a slot machine, I think you've sat next to somebody who just pounds the button. Uh, pressure sensors break, and they got to be ro slot machine buttons have to be robust. I can't see them being able to survive somebody pounding on it, um, like we've all seen. So I I, I don't see any advantage. Uh, to pressure sensors. Uh, let's see. Richard says, will overdue time clocked jackpots hit like wildfire at first reopening? Um, I, so I try to be very fact-based and I doubt it. Uh, some of the things that I've been hearing is that people, when they close the casino, uh, uh, a casino employee was going around writing down all the numbers on the progressive jackpots because when they powered everything down they wanted to make sure that it came back to that amount so it should be as though you know suspended animation uh it, it just n no they didn't the machines don't know the time change they just they were wor working and then somebody turned them off and then they turned it back on it should be right back where it was um on the other hand, uh, this has never happened before. So it would be interesting to see, you know, what actually happens. But I don't see how it would be possibly be useful. Unless we have another global pandemic next year. You know, when when will everything be shut down again? I mean, stuff happens, right? Um, but it's been that since 1917, <laughs> since the last one. So I, if we did find out that they came back, then... Um, what I want to do is to do what we did. I want what I want to do here is to do what we did when the casinos closed. Okay, we might even add another session, a midweek or something, if it happens really fast. That would have been a maybe a good idea before, because they didn't all close at once. So let's. I I would expect that they would not all open at once, and that it would be spread out even more than the shutdown. Shutdown was like two weeks, two and a half weeks. I can expect it being a month or more uh, when things come back. So, uh, you know, come here, report on the uh, uh, slots communities, report here uh, as things come back online in probably not April, maybe May, maybe May. Uh, and we will track the first ones that open and we'll use that information on the other ones that open as they open. All right. Uh, <laughs> Polly, you've seen the cat. Uh, Paula says, I want to see the cat. Well, they're a little bit fussy um, about sitting on my lap. I should be happy they don't want to sit on my lap all the time. Yeah? Just giving me a little... Uh, uh, one of my cats is just giving me that look. You know the look. Um, coolest place on the map is uh, Thermos Mill Spring. And that's saying something that Mill Spring is on the, t on the map. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know what that was about. Um, oh, um, uh, sorry about that, uh, uh, Jan. Uh, she says she can't find the uh, checklist on my website for one of the articles. I will, um, I will make sure that's uh, set up. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's been an evolution on the website, and uh, so. 
I will make sure that's up and running. It might be an hour uh, from now. I have a, a casino checklist uh, for a physical assessment of a casino, and um, I have to check to see if the link is broken. So Scott says, after reading my book, uh, that one, uh, Learning to Win, um, uh, the idea is not to show up the first day they reopen, but if uh, it is the first of the month, uh, wait till middle of the month and cannot uh, sta uh, cannot stand it, uh, go after midnight. Um, yeah, uh, I think we'll be. They won't all open at once, so we'll have some ideas of how how the openings go. Uh, but you're thinking about it correctly. Okay, there is going to be an advantage, but what will be the advantage? And so uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured that out. Um, uh, to make everybody included in the conversation, there are uh, chats going on uh, between individuals in the live chat, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so have your conversations. I'm going to go back to uh, the topic, okay? <laughs> um, uh, so we talked about fruit wheel symbols. Uh, I have another one for you, uh, which is a how-to uh, video that categorizes a how-to uh, and, and I'm putting up the different categories uh, so that it's easy to find in uh, when you go to my YouTube channel uh, I like the, the uh, uh, YouTube environment it's a little easier to see uh, if I add a video and I, I do add these videos to my articles it can be very buried and it's a lot more um, findable searchable uh, in YouTube, but I'll talk about that. So uh, I, the second video I uploaded, that would have been Tuesday last week, um, was how do slot machines pay out taxable jackpots? Now, there's a couple of things that this could have been about, uh, and I put, I put that link in the live chat, um, uh, but it's also going to be again available later in professorslots.com slash episode 85 when I create that page for the podcast, uh, so you can find it there later. Um, uh, and in the description of this video. So this uh, topic, this video, falls under the how-to category, which, even though it's only been out since Tuesday, has been, um, uh, has been, uh, I'm not letting myself get distraction. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to. Uh, so this video, um, how, do, how Do Slot Machines Pay Out Taxable Jackpots, is a how-to um, video in the category of how to, and it's much more popular. I, I'm already seeing it since Tuesday than my slots history stuff, but I think slots history is also important. So I'm, I'm using the feedback from likes and comments uh, to make more of one type of video than the other. So I'm going to be putting out some things that are good, going to be dogs, <laughs> not popular, but that's, that's something, the feedback that I look at. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so I will um, uh, adjust as I go, but for now I have to put up everything and see how it goes. Uh, so this video on uh, paying out, how do machines, uh, slot machines pay out taxable jackpots, uh, I realized uh, that people, uh, there's plenty of slots players who have never won a taxable jackpot. I've sat next to them. Um, people have sat next to me and and couldn't understand, I mean, there, <laughs> there was, there was, um, well, there was this poker player. They had the World Series of Poker at um, when it was Horseshoe Cincinnati. Now it's Jack's, but it's going to become a hot rock. Um, hard rock, sorry. Uh, ha hasn't quite done that um, fully, but uh, they had the World Series of Poker. And uh, young gentleman, I, I was told famous, but I don't really follow those individuals, uh, you know, uh, was there for the long haul and, and, and lost. Uh, fairly early on, uh, despite what he wanted to do. And he sat down, not right next to me in the high limit area, but two machines over. And when that, uh, so I'm sitting there playing my wheel of fortune that I like and, you know, winning money and whatnot. Uh, and he's playing and I asked him, you know, how did, how did it go? And he says, he's $4,000 down from the tournament. Um, and I said, oh, okay. And he says, so I wanted to, you know, I haven't really played slots too much. I wanted to try it, you know, get, got some time uh, after busting out of the tournament and he sat down next one over from me uh two over from me and he 
won a taxable jackpot. Um, what was it? $4,800, I remember. Uh, 45, 48, 48, 4,000 something, almost five. Uh, and he didn't know, I mean, he, he's a smart guy, knows his stuff, but um, more poker. And he was kind of like pushing the button several times because the machine broke or did it. No, it was a taxable jackpot. It, it, it locked up. Uh, so that, uh, you know, and automatically calls a slot a attendant who has not shown up yet. And it kind of looks over at me like, what the heck? Uh, you know, this is a terrible experience. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you look over down there at the area and you'll see that you've won that many credits. And if you multiply that number of credits, I think it was like um, 980 or something. Uh, and you multiply, multiply that by five, uh, and that's the cash you just won. So it looks like you just made your money back from the, what you spent to get into the tournament. And he's like, you know, uh, surprised look on his face for those of you on the podcast. Uh, and they came over and took care of it. And, and he had a good trip, he didn't have a loss for that trip. I don't know what happened to him later. He left, but uh, the high limit room, but uh, you know, made back <laughs> with a push of a button. He wasn't there more than like six minutes, uh, and he won back everything he had spent. And I just looked at him. And I'm like, "Welcome to the world of playing slots." Uh, any case, uh, and so that's one of the things that I saw. Another person, um, uh, I think they. M were kind of in a hurry. Uh, they they just came in, and uh, I don't want to say anything about maybe having a gambling addiction or something, but they wanted to spend a lot of money fast, and they didn't get their wish because they were sitting there, and they pressed the button, and it locked up. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, it locked up, and they didn't know what what was going on. In fact, well, then they did, right? It locked up, and they're like, what the heck? And they looked, and they saw that they had won a jackpot. So they, they stood up. Uh, they started walking away. They, they, as they did all that, they put, pressed the cash out button. So that told me they'd never won a taxable jackpot before. And I proceeded to put my foot in my mouth, which was I trying to be helpful, <laughs> trying to be helpful I looked over at her and I said oh it's a taxable jack it's it's a jackpot the machine's locked up a slot attendant will come over and you'll have to pay taxes before you can get the money it won't be a voucher and they turned and looked at me with them very upset and said taxes and I'm like oh uh yeah um the attendant's gonna be here I'm out <laughs> <laughs> I'm not part of this conversation anymore. Uh, I don't want to have to explain the whole idea of paying taxes. Uh, I wasn't even going to mention if she had won $200 on a slot machine someplace, and she that's income and has to be uh, is required by the IRS too. <laughs> we talked about a prior topic, uh, prior Q and A. IRS wants you to pay taxes on that, but it, they don't actually set it up so that it happens when you win the jackpot, uh, and people take, well, they do what they do. So. Um, I don't want to go over the video in detail now um, because I want you to watch it later, but um, I have a few comments to make uh, about what that video uh, about um, uh, how do slot machines pay out taxable jackpots is about. Uh, so uh, what it isn't about is when slot machines pay out. That's really talking about how do you win on a slot machine. Uh, what I'm talking about is what is the mechanics of winning the slot machine. The machine locks up. You know, don't be surprised. It's good news. Unless, you know, there's something else uh, going on with it. So I have other videos coming up uh, that will be about my winning slot strategies. And those will be, be available later. Uh, but for now, um, this is just about when jackpots occur. So uh, the mechanics of the payout process, the mechanics of the hand pay process, uh, it's what it's like to win a jackpot, um, taxable jackpot. So the first thing I go over in that article, just to be clear about what I offer um, in it, uh, for those of you who may not know my material quite so much, I talk about the random number generator because the random number generator isn't just used once when you play a slot machine. It's, it's, it's twice, okay, potentially twice. Um, the random number generator is engaged when you press the bet button. Okay, and if you don't win anything, 
uh, whatsoever, then it's only used that once. But if you win anything, if you win, it's used a second time to determine how much you won. All right. First time it's used whether or not you win. Second time it's used, if you win, how much you won uh, with different odds. So sometimes you are sit at a slot machine. If you've seen this, right? You've sat at a slot machine, and, and I've, I've certainly seen it. Um, uh, you win a lot, small amounts, small amounts. If only they were taxable jackpots, you know, sitting on a high limit machine. And I'm like, I'm using my bankroll, and I'm not winning enough to keep up with what I'm spending. And that gets to be frustrating. And one of the things I came up with was, you can look this up and we'll talk about it on other topics when I get there, is um, my goodness ratio, which will help you avoid those slot machines that pay out very little and perhaps less than you're spending. And there's little to be done about that, um, but to recognize how that might happen before you start betting. Uh, so there, from from talking about you know pressing the button, I go into, the, uh, let's say you you, won something with the random number generator came back and said you won something and then random number generator came back uh, uh, right after that and found out how much you won and that amount was taxable taxable being twelve hundred dollars or more it's not one thousand uh one thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents it is one thousand two hundred dollars or more uh, and if it goes over ten thousand dollars on that single press of the button and it's a jackpot um, uh, one of the little details is is uh, for the casino that I was at, if it was less than $10,000, then um, the slot attendant would take care of it, uh, handle it, but then they would always ask for a verifier to come over and just check the paperwork to confirm that it's correct. And that would be another slot attendant perhaps servicing another area of the casino, an adjacent area of the casino. So it's a two-person jo two job, but one person takes care of most of it and the other one's called over to check things towards the end. If you're over $10,000, and <laughs> you know who knows these things? People who've won jackpots over $10,000 and maybe more than once, like I have. And the second person to verify it can't be a, a slot attendant at the casinos that I was going to, Caesars Entertainment Casinos. Uh, you had to have a floor manager, you know, gentleman in a suit, woman in a suit, uh, and they uh, do a deeper check. Um, I've never won anything more than $27,000 in a single slot, slot machine jackpot, which is, you know, barely mid-level jackpots. I haven't won, you know, $250,000 jackpot or anything like that. Uh, much less anything more. So I don't know the verification process, um, but it's probably pretty specific. Some people have here, like Larry from UK, has talked in the past about um, how it might take six hours, you know, particularly if it's progressive and it's at multiple casinos owned by different casino operators. Uh, so that is all part of um, these more unique high level. Uh, uh, jackpots. If anybody has won a high-level jackpot, that would be, you know, um, well, actually, don't say you have. Uh, probably best not to share that sort of information. I I would say, um, I'll, I'll have a question for you in a moment. So, um, yeah, that's that's well, actually, right now, uh, in the chat, uh, would you? I want to be very specific here. Would you mention whether or not you've won a taxable jackpot? I'd be interested in knowing if you've won one. Please don't tell me how much they are. Please don't tell me how many they are. I, I don't want you to divulge financial information. Um, but if you've not won, or if you have won a taxable jackpot where you got a W2G, um, please mention it. Um, we're trying to get an idea uh, if you can't, uh, if you have, uh, and how much I need to talk about these sorts of things. Um, uh, so just checking with the chat, um, I have a message from Jan. Am I getting married? Are, are you getting married to in October? See, now I don't know if people are talking to each other, if they're talking to somebody else. Um, if you happen to mean me, Jan, no, I'm not getting married in October. Uh, uh, my daughter is um, uh, next month. Let's see. Uh, Paula. All right. Just trying to see if which one of these uh, chat messages are for me. A um, bunch, bunch of chats coming in, and um, uh, let's see. 
Sal has a question. I'm not sure it's, I'll, I'll read it. One line machine can play one coin, two or three coins, except everybody says play max, but is each coin denomination an independent game uh, and percentage payout for each can amount based on how much uh, they have won. Um, I've talked about this in the past and I'll briefly say it's a little off topic, uh, but um, every bet is identical whether it's one line or multiple lines or uh, one credit or multiple credits, every bet is identical, except when if you look in the pay table, it says something that isn't, all right? You uh, can sometimes you know, see in the pay table that it says, only get the bonus round possible if you make maximum bet, in which case that one can potentially have different odds. That's the machines that you would want to pay maximum bet on, so you have the best odds. Um, but if it doesn't say maximum bet required to get the bonus round, and it's very machine specific, then they're all identical. Now, there is one machine out there, which one is it, um, where every credit is actually, it's a video slot machine, every credit is a different game, right? Com it, the whole screen changes and you're, it's a different game. So those have different odds, but I think you'd notice that sort of thing. Um, so moving on, uh, Robert says yes, uh, and um, uh, Jan says she's won two, uh, two different states, uh, Louisiana and another one in, in Michigan. Uh, Scott says uh, lots. Um, yeah, there are people who have won lots, uh, and uh, Robert says yes, good. Um, Dean, yep. Uh, Steve says he has. <laughs> Steve has sent me more than a few pictures. I'm sorry, I don't mean to divulge that, but yes, Steve won. Steve won one, at least. Uh, Chuck, yep, he has. Doug, yes. Uh, Denise, yes. Uh, uh, Wise version, um, we are a couple, one, three taxable jackpots, consulted a client, one whom won 12 taxable jackpots in one weekend. Yeah, that, that sort of thing can happen, and um, not everybody is interested in um, winning taxable jackpots because as I try to explain what's your goal you know a lot of people have the most number the, the goal that most slots players have is entertainment is that lar the largest segment of the audience lar our largest group of people other people um, really enjoy the comps you know they maybe they're in the travel and the food you know great food at casinos and uh, some of them uh, and so they can really be into the comps more than anything else uh, but then there are uh, the smallest group that I've found so far uh, in the main categories, like there's some people who just want to know how everything works, like me, and I wouldn't, that's, there's me and there's maybe a few others. Um, but the third category is they want to win money. And winning money is hard, right? You got to keep records, you got to look at the uh, patterns, you've got to consider, you know, the financial reports you've got to do that work. And for some of us, that's fun. Uh, and so it takes all kinds. You don't have to win a taxable jackpot. Uh, I just wondered if people had, uh, because if everybody's like, yeah, I'm so bored with it at this point, then why would I even bother talking about? But if other people are like, no, oh, I always wondered what would happen if I did, I, I wouldn't mind knowing what happens to know I have, because the, the look of shock and surprise and, um, you know, and the people who've sat next to me and gone, what just happened? And I'm like, oh, well, uh, first off, congratulations. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, so thank you for the feedback. Um, yeah, Steve says jackpots, all kinds. So uh, the next few uh, of the articles, and I might not be able to get through all six, sorry, um, I can't wave my hands around too much, otherwise I thump the uh, microphone. I'll try to remove that later uh, before the podcast uh, to hear that. But um, two videos for articles. Uh, and so the next one uh, was an, is an article, the first of the articles. Uh, and why do slot machines say bar on their real symbols? Uh, please don't share. Uh, if you have the answer, if you read my article, if you know something about the history of slot machines, um, uh, that would be awesome if you would not share. Um, it's a major point. Um, uh, so you're looking, uh, Scott has an excellent idea. Uh, is there uh, an online poll uh, for this sort of thing? Um, 
Yes, but uh, as I was talking to somebody, uh, there isn't one right now, but it is a fine idea. And I'm actually making a list of questions because having a one-question poll uh, isn't uh, really efficient. I'm trying to figure out the best way to ask maybe five questions, ten questions. Uh, would you be interested in an um, uh, online course? You know, uh, how much do you take to a casino on a, an individual trip? You know, it tells me a lot of a lot of what the audience would want. So uh, I haven't folded that in yet. Uh, it's actually going to have to be pretty sophisticated. Um, and uh, the feline has returned. Uh, so yeah, I'll do be I'll be doing um, polls, but it's not quite necessary. I, I have to sort of get the questions together. Um, chatting now is is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's several things I need to know about my audience, but it's okay just to build the audience first and then get enough people to have a statistically good response because you only get like an eight percent response. Uh, and if I only have eight people, that means one person responded, and it's not statistically uh, relevant necessarily. Don't mean to get all technical there. Um, right. So. I'll wait, uh, but it won't be long because we're growing. Um, let's see. So this history, slots history topic about uh, why do slot machines say bar on their reels? Um, it's a bar uh, is, you see them now, they're traditional, but they're there from the beginning. All right, right about the time the, uh, the fruit reels showed up because people were trying to not be prosecuted for having a slot machine because it was becoming more, less and less legal. Um, uh, uh, they also came up with the bar symbols, uh, a bar symbol. And traditionally, you know, now we have one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, uh, but the bar is original, not unlike the cherry. Now, I don't see too many watermelons or grapes. Uh, no, plums, sorry, plums. Now, we have our genetically enhanced plump plums round uh, but they're uh, more oblong uh, <laughs> uh, oblong let's see ob oblate spheroid basically football shaped uh, that um, the plums used to be kind of old-fashioned plums before they got genetically enhanced to be plumper uh, that was on the original fruit flavored slot machines um, I think cherries I would say cherry is probably more common of all the fruit symbols that used to be common, uh, we have uh, bars and and um, uh, uh, bars and uh, cherries. So um, I might try to do this. <laughs> she doesn't like to be manhandled. Um, I have friendlier cats. She just likes to. She just loves me and and. Uh, but she doesn't like to be touched. Um, sorry. Maybe next time. So uh, that was my our cat experience. Um, I like dogs too, honest. Uh, right, so traditional bar symbols. And I won't tell you uh, where that would be, but I do plan on making a video about that article. Uh, and I've currently scheduled it uh, to be coming out on the evening, maybe 5 o'clock uh, on Sunday, a week from tomorrow, uh, April 12th. Uh, 2020 for those of you who are in the far future uh, so if you have questions um, please let me know uh, about bar symbols uh, Julie says at Red Mile HHR gaming yep, machines involves historic horse racing results yep 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 I went I went down to Red Mile uh, didn't write the article on it uh, too many things going on uh, but I do I wanted to at least learn about them and the newer games can result in five thousand dollars yes see that's the, that is correct but slot machines are not allowed in at red mile in kentucky they're not slot machines uh technically they're historic horse racing machines they're based on paramutual betting rules and paramutual betting rules uh don't have the same uh, federal tax law assigned to it. So yes, on HHR machines, which I learned could very well expand to all states because 
Um, it's one of those things. If you have paramutual horse racing, even if you don't have any more tracks, like Connecticut doesn't have tracks, but it has paramutual horse racing laws, um, you could have a facility that wouldn't be a casino. There would be an HHR parlor. Can't be called slot machines uh, because it isn't. Uh, it's HHR gaming, and they're looking at expanding those horse raced historic horse racing game machines to every state that has parimutuel wagering. So we could see that burst out of Kentucky real fast. Um, let's see, you bet low. Uh, Julie also says that personally she bets low and slow and uh, have won several cash out jackpots. No hand pay. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just HR trial machines. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for providing the book. Um, now, uh, Robert says, John, I have to leave. Yep, uh, if you have to leave, that's that's fine. We've got about 10 more minutes left, um, but I wanted to cover uh, at least one more topic uh, because it is important, um, having to do with casino safety. So I think I closed out everything I wanted. Um, yeah, I told you the next one of the videos that coming up a week from tomorrow would be uh, based on one of the articles I have. So here's uh, the link to... The next one that I wanted to talk about that I uh, published this week, uh, posted this week, um, let's do that, and right, so this one is called Casino Safety, and I felt like it was a little too serious, uh, so I added a, another title to it, Casino Safety, or Five Fun Ways to Protect Yourself. <laughs> Um, because you shouldn't be scared about uh, not being safe in casinos. Uh, um, you know, there are topics that I need to cover that aren't about winning. They're kind of about uh, not losing, right? I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you at a casino. And having situational awareness and some other things, just to point out some of these topics, uh, it's just part of what I need to discuss. I want you to be safe, even though it's a very safe environment. But one of the things that was pointed out to me is consider... When you go to a casino, all right, um, for one thing, you have cash, right? We have cash. Slots players have cash. Uh, and um, while you can do things like use an ATM or, you know, for withdrawal or deposit so you don't have to walk through the, the casino um, uh, parking lot or uh, parking structure with cash, um, you still could be expected to have cash. So it inside the casino you've got a lot of surveillance uh, and people walking around if you were to yell um, lots of casino employees would come running even if you're in a dark corner maybe not quite so much in the parking structure so maybe use the valet these, these are topics that I put into this post um, you know what's the value of a valet uh, and what's the value of the high tiers having um, uh, being allowed to park near the door of the casino and the structure and there's you know, designated areas um, uh, you know coming and going with ten thousand dollars or more in their pockets uh, and uh, so just be aware of um, you know that you have help uh, very nearby if you're playing a table game you're facing a dealer maybe boxmen maybe you know other casino employees who are right there with you nobody can walk up and um, solicit you I'll just leave it at that and use your imagination. Uh, nobody can walk up and say, hey, uh, you know, and try to scam you in all the different ways that you can be scammed because the, the, the dealer's right there and they'd just be like, call security, you know, and, and they can't be tr as tricked very easily uh, because, you know, they're far more experienced. They know the people and they, they know that this person has done that before. And it's just when you are playing a table game, you're safer because casino employees, multiple casino employees usually, are right there facing you. But when you play a slot machine, and you am pretty sure all of you have played uh, um, slot machines, uh, you're facing the machine. You may not even be able to see behind you. I've, I've been in the back room of a high limit area, and people have walked up behind me, and um, I talk a little bit about situational awareness and what to watch for and what to do if um, things get a little nervous. Trust your gut is part of the article. Uh, let me know if you have questions. I, I see some additional chat I wanted to double check on. Um, Robert said he had to go. Uh, um, 
thank you for all the information, John, you provide. Uh, we'll finish watching later, okay? Uh, have a good day. I uh, hope that everybody will be stay safe and healthy and look forward to getting back to what we have, what we love. Can't agree more. I mean, absolutely. Um, I try to not worry people. I, I've been having an overabundance. Part of the reason why I didn't post on Thursday was overabundance of, you know, <laughs> keeping my job and stuff. You know, I mean, see what's happening this week and, and just um, seeing what the next situation. It's been stressful. Uh, of course, it's stressful for all of us. Um, Doug says, John, when do you think casinos will uh, be back in uh, business? Here in Missouri, we had a shelter-in-place order until April 24th. Um, uh, Wise Virgin, uh, Richard, uh, made a suggestion, and thank you for um, uh, those messages, uh, Richard. Uh, hopefully not everybody will send me quite so many messages, but um, hard to keep up. But if your casino has a hotel, check to see if you can make a reservation. What a great tip, right? I know uh, somebody else, uh, Indy T Robin from Anytime Gambling, it's N-E Time Gambling, uh, is uh, someone who talks a lot about craps and blackjack. Um, great guy, Robin. Uh, he had a post earlier today about um, they decided to move their April reopening uh, in Massachusetts to uh, beginning of May. I think he might have said May 3rd or May 4th. Uh, so a great thing to do is to check to see when they, if your casino has a hotel, when they will uh, start um, accepting reservations. And that's a way to sort of keep track of what the internal thinking is. They could still put it off, but what's the current number? And that's my suggestion to you. Uh, let's see, here in Missouri, they had a shelter uh, order in place until April 24th. Yeah, I, you know, we, don't, we don't know. Every state's very different, um, and uh, but I think the easy thing to do is just to check the hotel and see when you can make a reservation. You don't have to make a reservation, but when you check to see, you'd be like, well, not until then, at least. Uh, Scott, uh, just FYI, illegal to conceal and carry on Indian reservations, uh, just FYI. Um, uh, usually there's a sign in the door. Um, it does depend on state law, uh, um, but uh, I have an article on tribal, res uh, tribal casinos, actually several, and those be coming out in its own category. Um, don't mess around with tribal casinos. Don't mess around with tribal casinos. I'm going to say it a third time. Don't mess around with tribal casinos, okay? They have their own police force. They have their own um, a judge. They have their own legal system, all right? And um, the casino is owned by the tribe. So it's just not anything to mess around with. There's... Um, uh, I think, do I have the book? I have the, I have the book on my shelf over there. Uh, Robert N Narcissian, uh, The Law for Gamblers, I think that is the title of the book. Chapter 8, Tribal Casinos, OMG WTF. That's the name of the chapter. That's very appropriate. So... Um, yeah, uh, one of the things I'll talk about, uh, actually, we have only two minutes left. The last thing I, uh, I wanted to go over, common definitions, which I w wasn't able to get to, but the last one I wanted to go over, the fourth article, um, was state gaming regulations and what you need to know. Uh, so I will um, share these two links here, so at least you have them for the last two articles that we run out of time for, which is fine. Um, and so definitions, some obsolete ones having to do with coins. Yeah, again, sort of a history thing and some of that, uh, but it's good to know what a candle is and, and some other stuff. So then I have um, also the state gaming regulations and what you need to know. And one of the topics and one of the subsections in that one is about um, uh, gaming regulations. And in, in the United States, it's primarily states. Now, I have am of the opinion that if Utah says there is no gambling in our state, that they still have that it's still a state gaming commission or state gaming jurisdiction, a gaming jurisdiction Utah, um, because they do have gaming regulations. It's a uh, amendment in their constitution, a bit of their constitution, which says uh, none, and that's about it. So uh, that's enough for me to call it a gaming regulation a gaming jurisdiction. 
Um, so 56 of them in the United States, one for each state and territory and federal district, even though that doesn't say much. Uh, Doug, let's see, Denise had a guy that robbed a bank in Fort Worth and went to Windstar. He was spotted on a blackjack table, and they would not let feds in to arrest. Had to call tribal police to do it. I think the guy would have preferred federal. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, not to be messed around with. Um, interestingly enough, uh, in just a few more seconds, uh, Ohio uh, Gaming Commission actually posts all the arrests made at casinos. We don't have any tribal casinos in Ohio, but uh, any of the arrests made and what the offense was uh, is all documented, and you can go read it. It's pretty interesting. Cleveland doesn't look like a pleasant place to be <laughs> gambling. Um, yes, uh, please, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve. Everybody take care. Um, have fun. Be safe. Make good choices. Hope this uh, the podcast audience uh, enjoys a little more consistency and a little bit uh, less distractions. Um, we shall see. Let me know if you uh, feel otherwise. Um, so take care, and I will talk to everybody uh, next week. And there will be more videos coming up.